Hey, what's up? Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the show. I'm joined once again by David Bray. It is February 3rd, 2021. I almost said 2020. Yeah. 2021. And uh, we're rolling up on two events. We mentioned yesterday, America's Cup. Um, what is that? The 10th and the 11th? That's right. Uh, men's freestyle dual meet tournament and the captain's cup the 13th and 14th so you just got one day in between to, to re- settle down and get ready for the next one and that'll be the women's captain's cup same kind of deal uh, dual meet tournament really looking forward to those and really looking forward to, to our guests to get things kicked off today it's christy davis nine time world medalist two-time world champion currently coaches at emmanuel college down in georgia christy how you doing good how are you guys i'm great i'm great i'm excited for this and, and to really get chat with you and, and hear your story a little bit more. And um, just We were just talking like about where women's wrestling is today and the momentum, momentum it has with an emerging sports status and the amount of young girls getting involved with it. And like, I'm really interested to like pick your brain about what it was like back in the day when you were coming through. And I want to get to that, but quickly, Captain's, Captain's Cup, um, when did you hear about this? I believe you're, you're coaching Jenna's team. Um, how did this come about that you got picked to coach and, and what were your thoughts when you heard about it and, and got picked to coach? Um, well, actually Terry Steiner kind of sent out an email, um, asking a bunch of, um, you know, college coach and recent college coaches, um, some of the people that have been in wrestling for forever that I've wrestled with throughout the years. And he just kind of called and was like, hey, do you know if you're going to be available? And I was like, well, yeah, let me check my schedule. So (laughs) uh, my biggest thing was, am I going to get rejected? Because I don't want to be on the draft if I'm going to get rejected. Um, So uh, that's kind of how it came about. And then we, um, I don't know, it just went from there. Um, It it happened really quick. It really, really quick. email next thing i know he was like hey this is where you're going and this is who picked you so awesome awesome um ha- ha- have you do you keep up obviously you keep up with women's wrestling you coach um what do you think about jenna's team and kind of the process of this draft and how the teams kind of came together your team i, I think it's, oh yeah <laughs> i think it's super super cool um this is just one of the the things that were, you know, as women's wrestling emerges and is getting bigger, um, we're having the opportunity to do. It's a great idea. I don't think in in my life would I ever think to like draft a wrestling team. Um, <laughs> I play I I play fantasy football <laughs> in a family league, but um, you know, to draft one, I, it was pretty cool watching. It was in between uh, practice and and one of my shifts, so I I got to watch it briefly. But super excited when Jenna, I've known Jenna for a long time. Um, you know, we're both New Yorkers. I thought it was just the coolest thing when she she picked me. So. All right, cool. Um, and I guess let's take it back to like the beginning. How, you know, when you started wrestling, there probably weren't very many girls. There, and I'm sure a handful that had come through perhaps. But uh, how did you get introduced to wrestling? Um, we'll start with that. Ooh, it's a long, it's, it's a long story kind of, okay. <laughs> um, but not really. I was actively involved in judo, um, my whole life. Um, that's where I started. And from the time I could walk, my dad threw me on the mats with him because he was active competitively. And he just said, I would go to practice and just roll around with the kids. Didn't matter who it was just continually like roll around. And then, you know, it's one of those things where I just, it was nothing I ever set out to do. Um, but you know, as far as Olympics, yeah, I wanted to make the Olympic team, but, um, I actually ended up making some junior world teams pretty young for judo. And I was a multi-sport. I don't know really if I was great at sports. I was just, I was a five foot five center basketball team back home. (laughs) And my dad was like, the only reason why I was down there is because I was so aggressive (laughs) and, like, hey, we need to have a heart to heart. Like, you're five foot five. There is no WNBA. I mean, that's how old I am. But, right. you know, and if there was, you would not cut it as a five foot five center. Sure. So, we started to make um, my focus more towards uh, wrestling. And I, I started wrestling my junior year in high school. Um, we knew the coach just from our Pee Wee program. Uh, and he was kind of like, hey, this is a sport, a school sport. So you can't just come on practice. Um, at the time I was training back in my junior year, I was training for the Olympic trials in judo in 1990. 
95 and then 96. And so he's like, your only option is to join the team. And my dad's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're done with basketball. I mean, I had made the varsity team and they had brought a bigger girl up. She was like 5'11". Yeah. And my dad's like, you're done. Like, we're gone. Like, I don't care what you do. So um, I just kind of fell into wrestling. Unfortunately, uh, I tore my ACL two weeks into practice. Uh, didn't try. And that was two months before Olympics, Olympic trials. Um, so I just rehabbed. I didn't fix it. I just rehabbed it and went into Olympic trials. And then I think that April, my dad saw something about women's wrestling. Um, and it was nationals in, I think, New Mexico. And he's like, hey, let's go try this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went, I was able to wear my big, huge knee brace because I actually didn't fix my ACL for like years, for like five years. I just wrestled with a brace. Wow. And yeah, probably not the smartest thing, but I mean, <laughs> the doctors kept telling me that it, it wasn't torn, even though I had like three MRIs. And so I was like, fine, forget it. I'll just wear this brace. And so... I wore a brace and then it was allowed in wrestling at the time. I had one of those big ACL braces covered up in pads and it wasn't judo. So I kind of, that's just kind of how I fell into wrestling. Okay. Um, I just kind of st still went to judo practices, but it was really hard without an ACL taking like foot sweeps and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and um, uh, I, I would say obviously, right. Judo had men's and women's divisions back then in the Olympics, and it was basically like accepted that there was men and women that did that both did judo, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, not it so was in wrestling. The most popular sport. What's that? But not so in wrestling. There weren't. Yeah, no. No. Was that was that was that a struggle at all at first? Was there kids on your team that didn't want you? Was there any of that? No, I actually, when I tell people my story, I was very, very, very lucky. Um, a lot of those kids that I wrestled with knew my brothers because I have two younger brothers. And so they grew up throughout the sport. So they kind of knew my background. Um, and like I said, because I was going for Olympic trials in judo, I was, I was, I mean, they did a lot of articles on me in the, in the capital region. And a lot of those kids just knew who I was and I, I practiced with them and I, um, so for me, it was very unique because they accepted me on their team. Yeah. Um, I never, they never, they go to bat for me all the time. We go to like duels or something like that. And I'd be thrown in their lineup and they'd hear somebody say something and be like, Oh, just, just get out there. She's, <laughs> uh, she's pretty tough. Um, so I feel like for me, I, it was very unique. I mean, I, I ran into those people at, in different States that, really didn't accept a girl on a guy's team but as far as my team goes and then when we wrestled other teams from the capital region they also knew my background too um so i wrestled at 145 pounds and i went 13 and 13 got my butt kicked but most of those kids that i wrestled i did freestyle with um at our club that uh coach de mayo joe de mayo yeah. was my wrestling coach yeah and so he was it's part of it too when we go to practice he was just like i don't care if she's a girl or not she's wrestling and she's in your room like you're just gonna either take it to her or she's gonna beat you up so <laughs> sure so you had these olympic aspirations in, in judo so you obviously had like high level goals it sounds like from from a young age um when did you you know i guess you, you kind of almost got forced to switch to wrestling to some degree because of the knee brace. When did then your goals shoot from like Olympics and judo to like wrestling world championships? Um, it's weird because I don't, I've, you know, when I got introduced to the, when they did that interview for the hall of fame, um, I looking back, like I just, it's not one of those things where I ever set a goal to make all these world teams. It was just something I did. I, I mean, I, I love the sport so much that I wasn't satisfied each year with that outcome. So that was my own goal. I, it was never to see how many world teams I could make, to see how many world championships I could make. It, it just, it's weird because people are like, well, did you have all these goals? I didn't really have anything. Just, it was just what I did. It's uh -huh. kind of like, 
nursing. It's 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 just something I do. I <laughs> I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You you I mean it's it sounds like though you had I mean like world level success pretty much right away, right? Is that right? Teenager, I think. Yeah. Yeah, when I was I think I was 17 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like right around when you started wrestling, right? Yeah, I know. I only had been doing it for a few, not even a year. <laughs> what is that? What was that like? I mean, you know, you're you're 13 and 13 your first year in high school wrestling and, you know, you're having like mixed results. Then all of a sudden you're on a world team. And I think I think you're in the finals your first year, like as a first year wrestler, basically. Right. What was that like? Yeah, uh, it was exciting. Um, but again, it was I I expected myself to be there. I don't it's it's bad, probably. Um, I. I thought that I wrestled boys. I was working out with boys. I had the top boys in my section pushing me. And I honestly didn't really even know anything about women's wrestling or freestyle. I mean, there's a bunch of mistakes that I had made, like throwing myself to my back. But when I went out there and I was like, well, these girls don't wrestle guys. So I, I'm just way tougher that way. <laughs> sure. So, so it, it sounds like... <clears throat> You're like I, I didn't really set goals to to you know have this long career and and have all the success. But was the goal like each year, like like looking to this year, like okay, uh, well it's ninety six or seven. I want to get to the world championships and and win. I took second. Okay, next year my goal is to win. Um, did it become more like a yearly kind of thing than like looking ahead and and trying to put together a great resume? Yeah, after after that first world championship. I was definitely driven. I was I was bitter. I was sour that I went out there with that kind of attitude and, and didn't get the results that I wanted. Um, unfortunately, those results didn't happen until like my fifth one. So, um, but that's kind of what kept me going. That's my drive. The the fact that I just I I was so new to it when I made the finals that I was like, there's surely a whole bunch of stuff that I can I can work on. You know, I can become this wrestler or transition you know i never really even called myself a wrestler i was a judo player that fell into a really fun sport so um but i would i would come back year after year and just set this goal and at the time i didn't realize you know i was so young that you can't just set this huge big goal like i, I needed little goals to get to it so <clears throat> um, for those first couple of years i was it was I don't care what I have to do. Like nobody's going to beat me again. <laughs> oh, I got, yeah. And my last, we kind of alluded to it. Cause my last question set up my next one is like, you, you take second in 96. Awesome. First time out. And then 97, 98, 99, your second, second, second. Did it ever become like, you know, I'm sure the first year you go out and take second, it feels great. But then like the second, third and fourth time, like, are you, just hitting your head against the wall. Are you frustrated? Are you? Is it the same person, or are you? Lo are there different people in the way? Um, the first year was China, I believe, and then the next few years came from um, Japan. Yeah, I'm trying to blank her name. She's, uh, uh I can't. Oh, I'm so bad. Um, <laughs> okay. but yeah, this and. Yeah, those next four years were the same, the same person that I lost to. So, um, but I mean, it hurt. It was, it was, it was embarrassing. I remember running off after like my fourth one, losing my fourth year in a row. <laughs> and um, Shannon Yancey uh, had found me in the locker room and she's like, well, at least you haven't, you know, at least it wasn't like three in a row or four in a row. And I was like, uh, it, that was my fourth one, Shannon. And she's like, oh, well, enough of the pep, uh, pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. So that was one of the things. And then, you know, Coach Coach Mike DeRoe was our coach, you know, at the very beginning for all those years. And he was just like, well, you got to figure out what you're going to do, what you're going to do to make yourself better, what you're going to do to push yourself to, to get to that, that first place spot. So, um. I guess the next year I, I came back and I won. So <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I mean, I think so it was Shannon's remark that really made me upset. It's not. <laughs> so at least it's not four in a row. Definitely, mm, but it was. <laughs> you're you're clearly like very driven and and a high performing person. Like 
from judo and your your desires and your goals to that shifted to wrestling and immediately and i can just tell by talking to you the mentality you had and how upset you were when you lost but like where does that drive come from not everybody has that and is it go back to your dad and judo or did it develop somewhere else along the way or maybe a combination of things I, yeah, I think it's just a combination of things. I think I just, uh, you know, from a young age, I didn't put any expectations on myself. I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. My dad used to throw me into uh, tournaments in judo and he would, you know, I would just blow through the five and six year olds and then he'd make me go, not even telling me, he'd move me up a division. Um, and I think just from I, I don't even know where the drive is. I just feel like, you know, when my back's put against the wall, it's just, it's that fight or flight. And, you know, if I want to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's not Look, like a teachable thing, I don't think. It's did, just. Has it always been there? And did it ever occur to you, like, that is something that you you have or possess? I don't think, yeah, I, I, with me my whole life. I, I just don't think I put it to use that, that I knew of, um, meaning I just know I had the drive. It was just one of those things like, I don't care if this six-year-old's not going to beat me. Like, I don't care if I'm seven, not going to beat me. Like, I just didn't like to get beat, I guess. Yeah, nobody does. But the thing, too, is, is my perfect example is with nursing. Um, when I went back to school when I was a little bit older, um, I didn't succeed in the nursing right away, and I focused on finishing out 2012, got my degree, which was my main goal, and went back to nursing school. And um, I mean, I went from me to college where I really didn't even care about my grades, but I think a whopping like 1.8. My parents are going to be so proud of me um, <laughs> <laughs> admitting that. <laughs> We've all had those, those semesters. Uh, they knew, though. I mean, they were paying for my college. They got my grades. And stuff. But I ended up re uh, wrestling, uh, being nursing school with a 3 4, 3 5. So um, it's just one of those things where it, I, I, I mean, if I want to do it, it's, it's going to be done somehow. I'll get it done. <laughs> I, and to that point, right? We're kind of going through your career, and then 96 to 99, it's like second. You finally break through in 2000. Uh, tell me what you remember about that, about that tournament. Um, I don't know. Where, where, where was it I say it was in Sophia? No, that was 96. Yeah, it was in, it was in Sophia. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it, yeah. As was your first one. Yeah. 96 was also. There's the, the two world championships that won, I can tell you, they were the most uh, unforgettable experience. This one was not in a good way, I guess. Um, I was wrestling the Russian and basically took like all the way until literally the last like two seconds to take her down. And I took her down in like like two seconds. Um, the Russian coaches were like throwing an absolute fit. And that was at the time where you can challenge. They used to do, you know, video challenges where they went and, you know, you gave them like Five hundred dollars or something. They went in the back. They reviewed it. So they did that, and we're like still standing around. So here I am, like all excited, super having this world championship. And then, since later, they're like, they're going back to re video review, and you could actually potentially wrestle like I don't, I don't even know, like an overtime or something like that. <sighs> so I was like trying to like sort through my emotions. Like, all right, no, they can't do that. They cannot do that. They cannot overturn it. It was clear. Like. <laughs> No, yeah. it's not going to happen. What a yeah, so that, time. I mean, it ended up coming back where they, they didn't overrule it. So then I was, like, happy again. But it was, like, I was so happy, like, crying. Couldn't collect myself. And then, you know, the coach was like, hey, it, like, you might wrestle again. And I'm like, I don't want it. I won. Like, <laughs> so it yeah. ended up being in my favor. But I, that's, that's, that's one of the – that was I, it was my first one and i just can tell you I remember just the feelings that, that i grew were just so up and down yeah that that that's uh talk about jerking your emotions around um and you and then <laughs> I, I think it was oh three was that your second one in uh in new york city which must have been awesome yeah at home. yeah yeah that one 100 percent. i i mean i can tell everything that we did you know from training 
to the gym we went to. I, that one I just kind of absorbed. I really don't think that, I mean, yeah, I, I set my goals on winning, but for me that year, it was like, we had an awesome team. Like, we were ready. We were ready to win like this world championship as a team. Um, and then on top of that, it was in New York city in my you know backyard. And um, my, my entire family got to come see me. And the one person that like, I was so ecstatic was my grandpa. Um, he, went to all my wrestling events, went to my softball events, basketball events. He was like, he's there. And then he had never seen me wrestle against girls. And he got to New York City and got to watch me not only wrestle against girls, world championship level, but winning it too. So, um, you know, world chips come with like special memories, but those two like were just the most special. I mean, not just because they were a world championship, but it's just the way the way I wanted, and then the people that got to see me um, wrestle. Do you remember who you wrestled in the finals in o in o three, or how that went? Three, it was uh, Poland. Okay. No video review. No, 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 no. <laughs> that one was a solid. Uh, I don't even know seven, eight, ten. Hours. Yeah, wrong on that too. Um, at, at, you know, I don't know, at, at, before you win these titles or in the middle of it, you know, like, what do you know about the, the history of women's wrestling, maybe Trisha Saunders or, or other women who had come before? And obviously there's not much in the way of internet and keeping up with stats and it's all word of mouth probably. So what did you know about women's freestyle wrestling the, and the people had come before you? Yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, yeah. my dad literally just that senior national tournament and was like, hey, let's go to this. And it wasn't until after that, I think it was after, so I won that and got invited to do the world team trials for the first year. And it was again in New Mexico and we did a training camp after. And when I started to like, um, Afsun and Trish and Stephanie Murata and, and Shannon, all kind of a little bit older, so I don't really remember them being at the training camps, but um, one of my good friends, um, Lauren Lamb, who's in New York as well, like she just took me in and was like, oh, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so. And I was like, wow. Like it's been going on for a while, you know, since at least eight, I think, with F soon. Um, it's exciting. I was just like, wow, like I'm not the only one out here trying to do this. Like I'm not the only one that is battling, you know, wrestling guys and stuff like that. And, you know, it was fun wrestling the guys at the beat. And I, I shouldn't say fun. It, to me, there was never a difference because in judo, there weren't a whole lot. It wasn't like the most popular sport for girls. Um, and my dog would always go with the guys during, during so to me you know when I wrestled the boys like there was no different I was like I wrestled you know there's a lot of wrestlers that came into judo practice when I was growing up to me when I wrestled guys, it, there was well, I didn't see, really see a different I I didn't you know I think that was another unique experience too where I just grew up practicing with guys practicing with men and then getting out there and I was like well I mean whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, growing up with the judo background, would, did you have like a judo influence? Were you, did you do a lot of throws and trips and, and judo influenced wrestling or was it more leg attacks and, and all that? No. Yeah. When I first started, it was all throws. Yeah. Um, why I steered away from that. I don't know. I, I think I just tried to become this wrestler and try to mix it up and try to throw people off, which really didn't <laughs> so, um, I really probably should have just stuck to my throws and my trips, but they're my favorite. Um, I don't know that I could really get down and throw people now, um, just because my body's pretty beat up. But yeah, um, they're fine. You know, I always say if women's Greco had started back, I probably would go person instead of free really? far. Really. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. There we go. I, I wasn't very good at protecting my legs, anything like that. So, <laughs> um, what what was access like to 
So coaching, you know, you mentioned Mike DeRoe and, and, you know, the camps with these ladies, but um, was there a problem? Where did you train? Who, who were the coaches typically? And, and what was that situation like? So you mean like training, like for world team trials? And stuff? I mean, like, like uh, just in, in general, like, uh, Day to day, what was your schedule like? Where were you training? Who were you training with? And and who was coaching? You know. So the only got to, to be around like Coach Duro and and some of those other coaches were like when we went to training camp in Colorado or wherever the training camp was. Um, so other than that. I, I uh, stayed at home. I stayed at home in New York. I trained with some of those younger high school kids that were coming up. And I was still kind of incorporating judo as much as I could. So I stayed home in New York and I was training. After I got out of high school, I was training. I was going to judo practice. I was going to wrestling practice. I was going to the gym. So I, I would do like something in the morning and then work. I was like a waitress at a time because um, I was also a young mom trying at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then I would like judo practice or wrestling practice and stuff like that. So I, I've been balancing it for, for quite a while. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Um, at what point did you, I don't want to say give up on the judo dream, but at what point did it maybe shift, right? Cause you were judo, 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 and then the knee brace and you kind of slid into over into wrestling. And then was it just like, this is my new thing, or was there still like uh, a lingering want for for a judo career, or is there still? Yeah, no, I never wanted to give up on judo. I think it just kind of faded out. I think I realized that I couldn't do the stuff because of my knee, and I mean, really, no doctor was going to fix it. Yeah, for whatever reason, um, I th I think that's when I kind of started moving towards. Like not even realizing I was fade, fade, phasing it out, I kind of did, which I went back after a few years of, of wrestling, and I, I just missed it. I loved it. When I was in Oklahoma City, I, I went um, in to a couple practices, and I was like, wow, this isn't so bad. But I really feel like I turned into that judo player that I always – could not stand at practice. And what I mean by that is when you're doing judo, it's like you like to be in close. It's like a, a free flow motion and, you know, everything's like go with the flow. And then these, these kids that would, <laughs> I feel bad. These people that would come in for <laughs> wrestling, from wrestling, they were just like, wanted you as in and then like I went like oh my goodness I went to a practice and I was like pushing somebody away and I was like oh my goodness I've turned into that person <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I'm really truly upset because I really really love judo I still love judo to this day um, in fact I would just get my youngest in it she's 11 but um, I, I don't think it was ever something I planned on fading out it just happened Christy, how how often like during the year, especially in those first few years, were were you getting together at camps with with some of the other top senior level women? Was it mostly just preparing for world championships or was that a pretty regular camp cycle for you guys during the rest of the year? No, back then it, back then it was just like kind of for world championships. They way better now and just, you know, collaborating through the year keeping up on the athletes and stuff like that. Um, but before it was just right before championships. When did that, when did that shift? When did that start to become more full-time and start to be a more integrated team? I would say when Terry coached and took over or opened that program at the training center back in 2002, um, when everybody was like, you know, the training center was the it place to go and practice and they had their athletes you know, 24 seven to kind of watch over and, you know, start camps and stuff like that. And they do Sh Schultz and then Schultz camp and stuff like, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You had a, a, a career that was successful for a really long time. Talk about your, your years at Oklahoma city. <laughs> 
Well, they were fun at a little older age. Um, it's, it, you know, it's just things again, where I tell my recruits, I was like, you know, I've kind of wrestled. I joke around, but I don't. I mean, I've wrestled on every level except for cadets. I mean, I just barely made a junior world team at 19. Um, cadets is the only thing that I didn't get to wrestle on. And uh, going to Oklahoma City and wrestling was, again, not, not on my radar. But I ended up having my second daughter. And unfortunately, wrestling to me is like I can't get away from it. And it's the only way I knew how to get back in shape. Um, I'm not a person that can go to the gym, get bored on the elliptical. I don't run. Um, and I, I'd much rather go into a wrestling room and wrestle for two, three hours, even yes. four hours, than be or elliptical. So once again, I just kind of fell back into it and um, to get back in shape after I had my my youngest. And, you know, Coach Archie Randall and my husband found me a couple years of eligibility. And, um, you know, those girls, some of those girls, even though there was a 10 year difference, are, are really one of my closest girls that I call and talk to or I see at tournaments and we just pick up kind of where we left off. So it was fun. I mean, it, once you know, it was fun being on a, a national uh, national championship team. Um, getting a couple titles as a college wrestler was fun too. But I mean, I, again, it's just not something I set my goals for. It's just I feel like I'm just that person that's kind of like a day to day person. If I'm gonna do it that day, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine, like, I don't know. I'm like my, I don't know, my first day or two, you know in the college wrestling room and you're like going around the room, like meet the new people here. Hey, I'm David. I'm 18. I'm from Colorado. And then you're like, Hey, I'm Christy. I'm the most accomplished women's wrestler in us history. Good to meet you. Like, what? I mean, what was that like <laughs> meeting a, uh, like a, a, a team full of college athletes when you are like so credentialed at that point? Um, I don't know. I don't even know if those girls knew. Um, I just think they knew who I was they never treated me any different. Um, I was not allowed to miss practice. I was working, you know, OU and OSU games for fundraisers. Um, to them, I was just literally, they called me Mama D. Like, that's who I was. I was like, their, their mom, their mom on their team is what I was. <laughs> and never said anything else. They were never like, oh, nine-time world medalist. Oh, this and that. Like, it was never like that. It was, it was, Oh, you're the mom of the team. Like, let's do this. Like, you said as you were as you were getting into wrestling, you never set out to win all these medals and have this long list of accomplishments. Did you know? And in the same breath, in the moment, or at any point during your career, as you're going through, and women's wrestling is whatever it was at the time. Did you try to look down the road and see what wrestling has become today for women? Um, but the opportunities and like the captain's cup and on a whole draft and, and what's ahead is even bigger. Like, did you, when did you start thinking, I guess, that way about where we are and where we could be? I, I don't know if I ever like saw it like that. I, I, you know, I just, I think I wanted to see the numbers year by year to see how much it was growing. Um, and like I said, where I am today may me so happy. I mean, just when I look back and see this 20, 25 years worth of wrestling experience, um, today, I guess, would be the day I look back and say, this is phenomenal. This is great. Like, you know, I'm so excited for the future and these girls in wrestling. Yeah. Um, pr pretty remarkable where, where they're at, where they've come. Um, gosh, I can't, you know, when you know when you wanted to be a, a ju judo Olympian, and you you wanted to be a wrestling Olympian, but it, it wasn't in the cards. I don't think until was it o what was the first year? Yeah, oh four. Yeah, oh four. So and you you made a comeback in sixteen, right? Um, <laughs> to tr talk about that, um, probably wanting to be in the Olympics and and coming back in in sixteen and giving it a run. Uh yeah. So I had some uh, mishaps in 04. Um, in 04, there was only four weight classes. I was I won both world championships at 147, 149, 
And when the Olympics came around in 2004, it was 138 pounds or 158 pounds. I was always kind of in the middle. Um, didn't really think I was big enough for 58, but really never, probably don't think I weighed 138 pounds since birth. Like I've <laughs> always been a kid. Like, so I, I, I mean, I tried, I tried to set my mind to it. I had, you know, made that weight all year. I went two out of three with Sarah McMahon that year, um, was ready to go. And then I, I just, for that split second, um, I don't know, fell off course or I, I, I look back and I can't even tell you where I went wrong. I mean, I mean, there, I'm sure there's a thousand places I went wrong with weight management and stuff like that, but, um, you know, it hurt, it hurt missing weight. And then I went the next day and I went up 20 pounds and I wrestled 158, got to the finals there. And, um, you know, I lost to Takara Montgomery in overtime and then won by one point. Um, so it was kind of rough. Uh, then I think at that point, I I'd put my, at that point when I realized that women's wrestling was in the Olympics, I put all my eggs in that one basket. Um, it was, it, it hurt. It really hurt. Um, I don't know that I fully ever recovered from that. And so when I went for the next four years and I was beat up, I mean, to this day, I've had seven surgeries, I've had a couple ACLs. I've had both my shoulders done. I've, you know, my, my hips pretty messed up. But I think after that, it was just like, I don't know that I was as driven for those next four years. So I feel like I kind of got into this, this like, you know, not dark place, but like just know that I really had the passion for the sport and I never really thought I would get to that point. Um, and then I, I met Link and, you know, he was kind of like my cheerleader. He's like, all right, let's do this. Like, even if you don't go after eight, like let's finish out this, this cycle. Um, and so I did, and then I think my goal in 12 became to get my degree. Each year I had different goals. Um, <laughs> you know, four was the team, eight was I guess just to kind of get through it and then figure out my life. And then 12 was to get my degree. And then <laughs> 16 is a whole different story. I went through nursing school. Uh, again, I, I, I all, all I did was study. I went from class to the library to clinicals and, and that kind of stuff. And I feel like I got bored. I started working out again and it was just, again, it was there. I mean, I, I was in between graduating nursing school and taking my boards and I just got this idea that I still maybe wrestle and you might as well just go for it. And <laughs> it was a little different in 16. I was a little bit older. It, it definitely hurt, uh, cutting weight. Um, I think that was my biggest issue. I mean, I had definitely gained a lot of weight during nursing school and then that weight cut was really bad, but I feel like I learned a lot in 16, um, which has kind of helped me coach. Um, I'm definitely a different wrestler than I was four years ago. Um, I, I feel like that coaching aspect really makes you sit back and, and realize the things that you takes a hard look at what you did wrong and what you could have changed. And, you know, my strategies for wrestling have changed. I, I, you know, I say it to my kids all the time, I'm like, man, if I got out there now, which I won't, <laughs> <laughs> I know that, um, my whole philosophy and, and the way I, I wrestle is completely different. You know, even practice wrestling around, I like, wrestle different. So, you know, it, it was fun. I it just, I probably needed more than uh, six weeks worth of training for sure. <laughs> did did you, go ahead. I get bored. Oh, I just get bored and I get these thoughts in my head. Like, like I said, like that, that was a day, like you weren't going to stop me from, going again like you weren't gonna stop me he's gonna convince me otherwise like <laughs> it's just like one, one, like you know you're very in the moment it seems like right I'm, I'm planning for this year or this day or this tournament um did you legitimately think you had a shot to make the team or was it more just to get out there and do it because you like to compete and you want you like training and, and everything else yeah i probably didn't have my sights set on uh in 16 it was just one of those things like finally go out and enjoy myself finally nothing 
my reputation wasn't on the line. Like I, I wasn't expected to do anything. And that was the first time since I think I was five years old where I wasn't expected to do anything. I didn't even tell my parents I was going to wrestle. You know, I, I didn't tell any. <laughs> uh, no, no, they were kind of mad. They're, they're just like, what do you mean? Like, uh, because I know they would have not talked me out of it, but then like, like, what are you doing? Like, what is your thought process? Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, anybody. And it was just because it was my thing. Like I, I, I wanted to do it and they going to tell me otherwise, but that was like literally the first time I think since I was five years old where I didn't put pressure on myself. I didn't put expectations on myself. Like, and I was uh, free. I felt free. I honestly felt free. And I think I needed that after all those years of competition. I read, I read somewhere that like one of the, one of the ways that like parents can help their kids like have a, a healthy perspective on exercise is for their kids to see them not only exercise and sweat, but like pursue a goal. What, what was that like for your kids to see you compete for, for those years, but particularly in 16? Um, like my own kids or yeah, like, yeah, my... your own kids, your own kids. Um, yeah, my youngest one, I don't really think she understands the concept. She's in, I don't really specifically actually have her in wrestling. Um, and the same as, goes for my oldest. I actually didn't put her into wrestling until she was in middle school. Um, but what I really think is cool is Kayla, who is now wrestling, on the, starting to come up on that senior level, saw all of these that are making the world team now wrestle. And it gave her goals. You know, she was like, hey, I, you know, I'd go to like Oklahoma City, you know, go to a college tournament and see Sarah Hildebrandt wrestle, you know, and she, she has all those girls that she saw growing up and now she is starting to set her back, which is awesome. You know, Kay Kayla was also around at the training center with me where she had all those Olympians. Um, she didn't know it. She didn't know what those guys did. She didn't know they were all part of the Olympic team, but she got to see them wrestle or weightlift or swim or all those kind of sports. So I really helped her. And now my youngest one, she does volleyball, basketball, and softball. She goes to the wrestling room with us a lot. And before it was like, you know, trying to force her to wrestle or teach her to wrestle when she was younger. But now she watches those girls and just, she thinks she knows what she's doing, but she really doesn't. But she's out there and tries to like wrestle them. And it's really cool to watch. So she's... She's a little bit more lackadaisical, I guess, but I feel like the more I've brought her around, she's really starting to take an interest. And if she takes an interest in wrestling, that's okay. I don't think that's just one of those sports that I feel like wrestling will always be there for those, for my girls. Like, you know, I, Kayla didn't start until she was in middle school. And I feel like that's because we could teach her how to do it. Yeah, um, yeah. Same thing with my letting her do all these things and everybody's like well what about i was like no no because if i force her on her she's not going to want to do it let's make it fun so i take her to practice with the college girls and she tries she tries to beat up on the college girls but <laughs> more of a fun thing you know and and she does she gets she sees the hard work and dedication she went to basketball practice and this is funny and was trying to run sprints and stuff and came out and was like all teary-eyed and i was like what's wrong with you and she's like I just can't do those sprints. And I was like, well, you have to like work at it. And so the next day, I, I, I kid you not, she came up to the to the college with us and she jumped on that elliptical. And by golly, she was on there for about 45 minutes, you know, trying to get two basketball games that night. So Wow, she got that drive like a mommy. Yeah, and you don't realize like really the examples that you're setting or these girls, you College girls are setting for these younger girls. It's great. I mean, I mean, there's no other way to explain it than you know, my my kids got to learn from other athletes. So yeah, it's it's definitely a great environment for them to grow up in. Um, I want to move on to a little segment we do like to do with all our guests. It's wins and whoopings. Um, so I I want to know your whole career from you know your first wrestling match till I guess your last one at the trials. Anyone in between? Is there like 
a single win that stands out as like, and maybe it's one of the ones you mentioned today. We talked about a few. Um, and that for whatever reason, it was a great win or a comeback or some for some reason it stuck out. And then the same thing with like a really bad like ass whooping you took, like one of those ones where somebody just beats a tar out of you and you come off the mat. Like man, that wow. You can answer. You can answer either one first. That's a good question. I don't think I've ever looked at it like this. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, it's probably those two matches. Like I said, my two world championship wins are the most memorable wins. Um, I can't put one ahead of the other, just because they both have different <laughs> different values to me. Um, and then. Butt kicking, geez. Um, I mean, I think I kicked my own butt. Um, I would say that very first round of trials in 16. Um, I won my first match, but I literally was up eight to nothing and almost got pinned. Wow. Um, so I really, my own butt. <laughs> I ended up, like I said, but it was a struggle to come back. I mean, I had to work. I had to, I've never, I, and I was very rare that I was put on my back, not to say that, I mean, yeah. but it was hard. I had to fight off my back for the first time in forever. And I, you know, I only had six weeks of training. I, I, I think the whole 2016 Olympic trials kicked my butt. <laughs> okay. Okay. That tournament. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Those are good answers. Um, all right. And, and one more segment we want to play this with our next guest is Tion Ware. We got him on the line, and uh, we're going to pull him over. Tion, how you doing today? Doing well. Can't complain. Awesome. Thanks for being here. We're with Christy Davis, nine-time world medalist, two-time world champ, and, and we want to have this segment with you two where we'll let you guys ask each other a question, the overlapping question. So, uh, Christy, whenever you're ready, we'll let you go and, and ask whatever you'd like to Tion here. Okay. I guess, Tion, my question is, and it kind of stems from this year um you know with covid and everything how are you able to keep your athletes um motivated up and going and just show them that they're right at the end of the tunnel i mean to be honest with you that's been a hard thing you know because obviously you know with this young guy these young generations they're getting caught up in feelings you know what they feel right now what they see right now <laughs> And, um, you know, first we had to express the, the importance of COVID and follow protocol, you know, like you guys have been out, you know, you guys have been out since March, you know, how long do you want to keep staying out? Do you, do you just want to keep practicing, going grinding every day and not getting anything to show for it? And, you know, our practices are very hard. And so a lot of these guys are like, no, I need something to show for it, which we saying, hey, you got to follow the small things, which is which is protocol, which is the COVID protocol steps. Protect yourself because when you protect yourself, it makes it easy to protect your team. And once guys started doing that, guys started seeing that. Then, you know, it gave us the confidence to say, hey, you know, November, we have a tournament coming up. We haven't we haven't wrestled been able to compete in eight months guys let's let's go hard for a month let's go for this tournament to see where we're at and let's and i believe once we got to see that out um in omaha guys got to you know get that win back and 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 see what's up and then it motivated them to have a little break and then say the season is just a month and a half away let's 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 get ready for this season even though it's a short season they were like they the guys were they were like cool it's a short season i ain't got it i ain't got it they used to a six month season so uh yeah. three month season is a whole lot better for them so they's like i can go hard for three months knowing i'm gonna get another breather and break and and so short discipline so the deal is it's, it's an everyday battle you know you just get you, you know no you got very few that come in with the with the game plan and goals and then you got the majority you know that you know, you gotta, you gotta drag it out of them. You gotta, you gotta show them. You know, say, hey, remember what? This is what you were talking about. Is it talking, or are you gonna show me? And you gotta, you gotta, you know, re, re, show that focus. You know, redirect that focus to say, hey, the season's now a month left. You know, you know how fast a month goes, and then so you see a lot of guys say, okay, I'm gonna buckle down for this last month and do what I need to do. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Tian, great answer. Um, and, and do you have a question now for Christy Davis? 
Now, uh, listening after listening to you for the last 15 minutes, now you wrestled where I grew up. At. <laughs> I grew up off 27th and McKin- I grew off 27th and McKinley. That's why I started wrestling. And so, uh, yeah, you know, Archie, we, we we have somebody in common, Archie, and Archie was my freestyle coach in the summer. <laughs> And, and I hope he's listening to this too, because I always bust his chops over. Now, what type of Archie did y'all get? Did y'all get a nice Archie, or did y'all get a rowdy Archie? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Um, oh, I, there's so many. There's there's so many. There's so many Archies, and it's funny because I had you know Coach Randall and Coach Link, and I feel like Coach Link has really kind of fed in. You know, he just that was his mentor you know so I, I i literally had double the archie randalls in the room and it was like <laughs> i couldn't get away with anything there was nothing i could get away with and like i said i'll tell my kids my you know my team now and i'm like you think coach like i, like, I, I had two of them you know and then i there was a six o'clock then we had practice at 6 a.m i literally had to drop my daughter off at daycare 10 minutes prior in Yukon and make it down to one time I almost got a ticket got out of it is because they knew coach Archie and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, he would just come in the room. I was like, he knows everybody. So I'm like, even if I was late that day, he probably w- you know, would have ran me for who knows how long he just, he's just crazy. He's, I love him to death. He's like my first phone call when I'm having a bad day and coaching, you know, talk me off a ledge, but Man, some of the stuff he used to say or or do, and you know, but purpose, you know, running my program now, I'm like, you know, I honestly say, like, what would what would Coach Randall do, like, you know, because oh, he he just oh, yeah. no, he, I, he really no. did. I remember, I remember <laughs> wrestling in Fargo, Fargo. I come off the mat, just text somebody, and he was like, "What was that? What was that?" And I was like. It was a tech, I thought. And he's like, you know, little did I know, little did I know, he, he's chopping me for the next match not to get satisfied. That that was the deal. I always I always bust his chops on. I was like, you never let me get satisfied. And he's like, and look where it got you. You know, it's like at the time we wasn't we weren't seeing. I wasn't seeing that, but uh, man, he kept me on my toes. And I, like I said, I didn't have to wrestle for him in high school, like day in and day out. I was just with him for a three month period over the summer. And, <laughs> you know, and and, and 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 it was like, man, it was like. I think where my guys call me major pain, I think he has a factor in that because he never let me get satisfied. You know, he never did. And and, and, it, and it sticks with me. And so every time I see him, I always bust his chops. And he's like, hey, you was winning, wasn't you? I was like, yeah, you right, you right, you right. <laughs> yeah. So. That's his comeback. That's exactly what he's saying. He's like, oh, well, you're doing good now, aren't you? You right. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like he's got some secret sauce going on there that, that that's working for him. Um, Christy, man, it, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you and chatting all morning and uh, very much look forward to, to seeing you at the Captain's Cup and seeing all that great wrestling. And Any parting words for us before we let you get on? Team Jenna, let's go. <laughs> Thanks right. for having me on. Thanks, Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll see you, uh, see you uh, on the weekend after this coming. Yeah, bye-bye. See ya. Take care. Best wishes all right. <clears throat> We'll move on with Tion. Where uh, interesting, I guess coincidentally, you you guys she went to college right where you grew up um, in near mm. Oklahoma City, um, and I guess that's where I wanted to start with you. You know, you growing up in Oklahoma, I guess in the in the probably the nineties. What was it like the wrestling scene um, in general for you? Uh, you know, obviously, just where I came from, I didn't you didn't know nothing about any wrestling. Like I said, o- OCU was a two minute walk. And, you know, my old teammate Hayes went when he was coaching. I went back there to look around the neighborhood and I didn't recognize it. It looked so pretty. They they fixed it up. It looks nice. I mean, I'm like, this stuff wasn't here when I was growing up. And so um, so you, you didn't really have you didn't see wrestling. You, you only heard about the, the typical American sports, baseball, you know, basketball and, and, and football. And, um, you know, it, but. Like you said, my my came from just wrestling with brothers and watching WWE and all that stuff, and and obviously it was a cheap sport too. So that yeah. was that was one reason why Grandma put me into it. What was your what were you you know what were your early wrestling memories like? And I guess your Grandma put you in. How old were you? And you know, did you even know who John Smith and and like the you know Oklahoma State and Oklahoma none of that. 
No, I didn't learn of those guys until a couple years. Um, uh, I started wrestling at the age of six, and like I said, I was a big WWE fan. And uh, you know, when when I when Grandma says, "Hey, I'm put you in this sport of wrestling," that's the way my mind was thinking. Thinking, the, you know, uh, Hulk Hogan, those type of guys. And so, yeah. uh, little did I know that was an amateur wrestling. And so, um, you know, and. It was it was what I lived on northwest side. It was on the east side, so it was about a fifteen twenty minute drive. And so, uh, you know, my first experience—I always tell people—my first experience was kicking somebody. <laughs> you know, when that kid came at me, I straight <laughs> I kicked him. And, and so, uh, <laughs> you know, and I mean that was the WWE. That's what I knew. And I remember my coach grabbed me and it was like, "What are you doing, man?" And he grabs me. He's laughing. And, you know, he comes over and he starts teaching me, hey, you, this ain't WWE. And little, my coach always referred, he's like, you out there doing that junkyard dog stuff. Well, little did I know that junkyard dog was a wrestler. <laughs> a <laughs> WWE wrestler. I just didn't know. I didn't know. I, you only knew Hulk and the Ultimate Warriors and Macho Man. You yeah. knew those guys. But you, they didn't promote the junkyard dog. And so he always said that. And then I remember it took me until my teen years that knew who he was talking about. And I was like, Oh, that's who Coach was talking about. But he took me he took me under his wing and everything like that. And I remember my first year, I won state. You know, I ended up winning state uh, my first year of wrestling. And so, you know, that was that that was a motivation. That was a drive. As kids, you know, when you're seeing those trophies, those big trophies, um, you're bringing them home, you're bringing them to school. That that became your drive. And um, and like I said, I didn't learn of John Smith and those guys until my third year of wrestling when I got a scholarship to Oklahoma State wrestling camp. And um, I still didn't know him, you know. And and but the deal was is I was excited. That was you know, there's hundreds of kids there that I'm getting to wrestle, getting to see, and getting and getting a battle against. And so you know, and I'm thinking I'm on some because I ain't have to pay anything, you know. I think we got a. <laughs> there you go. Somebody tried to call me. Uh, that's all right. um, but uh, but uh, yeah, and so I, and that's why I learned. I started seeing different guys that I actually became friends with at the Oklahoma State camp, and and then started driving from there. Uh, you won. You won state as a, your first year as a six year old. Yes. Just just um, was it more aggressive? Were you better at wrestling? Were you stronger? Were you? No. All the above, none I mean, of the above. I, I believe, I believe I was more, I was more, I was more talented. You know, I, I was more athletic, should I say? You know, um, um, you know, I, I, I was, I was very good on my feet. Meaning, you know, you know, little league, you got headlocks, you got fireman's carries, you got those, those, those few moves that that can work. Mm -hmm. But I was, you know, I might get hit in the headlock, but I roll through. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, it's like you can get away with certain things, and so. Uh, you know, and I was stronger than a lot of guys too. And so, uh, you know, that, that, and being at the top of that division, you know, that, that helped me my first year. And, you know, and finally, you know, as I remember that summer, my coach was like, Hey, a lot of your matches, you're just trying to muscle guys over and that that's not going to work. You know, as you're going into a different division, you know, you're going to be at the bottom and guys are going to be older and they're going to, they're going to be a little, a little stronger than you are. And so, um, you got to start working on your technique. And as a six year old, you and you ain't really understanding that. You're seeing results. You're like, I'm winning, man. And, the, and, and little did I know. Yeah. It, it opened up my eyes that second year of wrestling. <laughs> When did, but you know, when did you develop like a love for wrestling? Was it right away, or was it not until at some point in into your career where it took yeah, over? Yeah, I I developed. Um, I say when I was more uh, ten years old, when I got around Hayeswinkle. You know, we had a uh, we our club team. Our club team was a unique club team. We had about ten guys, and you know, we and um, and we were coached by uh, Dave Hayeswinkle, who was an Olympian. Mm -hmm. and, um and medalist as well and so uh so practices you know they were they were actually fun you know practice it, it wasn't out you know as from the ages of six to to ten our practices were rough you know <laughs> popular man yeah everybody's trying to get hold of on people yeah everybody's still messing with me but uh <laughs> uh practices practices man they were they were tough and it opened our eyes um, as a young kid, I'm sure, like Christy said, you, you know, I got calloused, you know, how to how to get talked to as a young as a young kid, and so, um, you know, and but 
Coach Hazelwood was a different. He was a different breed. He was he was very soft spoken. He he was a type. He was a coach. If you made mad, you felt terrible. You felt bad because you didn't see him get mad often. And um and so you know he he focused you know practices you know we we were learning new things and and from the ages of ten to thirteen I believe that's why I developed the most because that's where I saw a lot of stuff that I'm teaching my college guys now I saw that during that age and and if you you knew us growing up and parents that saw Coach Hazewinkle in the corner Coach Hazewinkle didn't say nothing he he, he just sit there. And he, I, he'll have a notebook, and he act like he's taking notes. And little did people know, he was doing a crossword puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd, be, they'd, be, they'd be sitting there doing a crossword puzzle because why? Wow, they let you, they actually let you see things for yourself and and, and, and wrestle for yourself. And um, and then when he got back into the room, you know, he 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 talked to you like. I talked to my college guys. What do you see? What did you see out there on your film? Or how that guy beat you or how you couldn't turn that guy? He, he, he made you start thinking at a young age. And um, and that's what opened our eyes up, you know, during that time of really learning and developing. And we were seeing the results. We were, we were, we were winning everything. You know, I remember one year we had, <laughs> well, we had what, five guys, six guys at Tulsa Nationals. And... We were all first and second, and we ended up winning Tulsa Nationals, you know, with just those guys because that's how lethal we were. And, um, wow. and you know, but once again, that helped that helped develop me from that stage to when I got to junior high to high school and everything like that to keep sharpening those tools. It's pretty remarkable that, for you know, like 10 to 13, you got this, you got Coach Hayeswinkle as your coach, and you, you describe them as like, some of your best years of learning and things that you still te teach to your college guys. Um, and you, you were, you know, young, undefeated in high school, four time state champ. Would you attribute a lot or how much of the success that you've had in high school and beyond, would you attribute to something, some kind of foundation that was laid by, by coach Hazewinkle from the ages of 10 to 13? Oh man, it, it was a lot of it because uh, once again, a lot of that stuff I learned from him um through him you know through my teammates man that's what like i said that's what stuck with me in junior high high school then i had the confidence of teaching it you know to guys to other guys because when you can teach it to somebody that's when you know you're learning and um once again that stuck with me like like i said before you know um from age of six to ten my little league coaches man they 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 gave us goals they they they, they showed us goals being being you know we was i mean we were inner city kids, you know, 50 of us, you know, it was a majority of black team. We might have one or two, you know, white kids on the team. And, you know, they taught us discipline, meaning when we went into tournaments, we went places and we were in a single fine line. People knew who we were. We weren't sitting in the stands playing around. We were sitting there watching for our next match. They taught us a lot of things because a lot of us didn't have father figures. And so, uh, and then when I got to Hayeswinkle, you know, Hayeswinkle was saying, okay, I'm going to teach you how to sharpen your tools. I'm going I'm to teach you those moves and this and that and the other. And that's what helped me from the age of 13. So I had the, I knew how to deal with the constructive criticism as a young man, but now I knew how to, you know, sharpen my tools and, and ask questions and, you know, and develop, keep developing. And that stuck with me when I got to college. It, it made everything as well as Archie. Archie, Archie, as a, when I was in high school, Archie, he, he toughened me up too because once again, he never let me get satisfied as well. And, and, and then my high school coaches, they were unique as well. Bowling back, they were, they were, uh, national champions at UCL. So every day he was my, he was my goal. I wanted to beat that man and I couldn't beat that dude for the longest. And, and so, you know, that's what helped me try to sharpen myself as I went through high school. But when I got to college, I had all that stuff already in me. So when I saw the workouts, when I saw what our coaches were throwing at us, I was like, I've already done this. I've already been here. I've already been there. Now it's to rise that intensity, you know, to the next, to that college level of, of doing it so you can be successful at it. You know, Tion, you said something earlier that was really interesting to me. Um, you said that Coach Hayeswinkle, like he would, instead of telling you what, what happened that went wrong, he would like ask you what happened, what did you see, what went wrong, how do you fix it? Um, 
was that a skill that that you had right away or was that something that you had to kind of figure out how to do how to assess your performance and and if so like how did you learn that skill i feel like that's something not a lot of youth wrestlers especially think about right i mean a lot of times we're so used to somebody telling us something what we're doing mm -hmm. and as a little when i watch you know when we watch film when especially when i was a kid you know like from six to ten, you didn't want to be you, in a way. You didn't want to be your film up on that screen. <laughs> a lot of times, it's it, it's what he's doing wrong. It's what you're not doing. You know, and, and you you saw that. And you're like, oh man, I hope my match don't get put up there. And, uh, and then so you know, you were scared of film, but you saw it. You saw it. You're like, man, what am I doing? You know, and and then when I you know got with Coach Hayes Winkle and those guys. You know, film, it wasn't, you, you weren't scared of film. You want, you actually look back, you were anxious to go see your film, to see what you did right and what you did wrong. And, um, and so when you, when you got into that practice, you know, you, you were, you were motivated to work on the things you were doing wrong. And, and that, that's the good thing that, you know, at the time, you know, Coach Hazewinkle was asking us these questions. There'd be sometimes we were like, no. I don't know. I, you know, sometimes we're thinking we're doing everything right. But he's like, well, go back and watch a film again and see if you can find one or two things. And then you go back and you you find something and you're like, all right, let's focus on that. Then let's work on that. And 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 as kids, you know, you you don't get it. But then you're like, but this is my coach. I trust him. You know, obviously we're seeing pictures. Of, we're seeing pictures of him on the world and the, bringing home, you know, bringing home these medals and all these guys. We got to learn. I got to learn about like you said, John Smith, about those guys from the pictures of, on his wall and everything like that, seeing those credentials and everything. Pretty sweet. Um, when, when did you turn your eyes to college wrestling and like, you know, all right, yeah, I'm doing well in high school. There's another level. That's what I want to do. And, and what was recruiting like? Uh, I really didn't start really – Looking into college wrestling until I got into that environment. Um, we we lived down um, I, at the age of thirteen. I lived like in Lexington, and I got to go to OU all the time and and see that room and be in that room. I got to be around the Byron Tuckers. You know, I got to be around the John Cadens at the time, the Rod Joneses, and um, I got to I got to see the environment. Then I also got to see the history too with. Uh, Dan Gable and those guys, and so Cleo McGlory's, the Melvin Douglas, you know, um, or, and so I'm like, okay, well, um, you know, I was like, okay, now, was I ready to, to wrestle college guys? No, but seeing that train and see how they, they were, how they worked out and everything like that, I'm like, okay, all right, college, college, college is going to be rough, but <laughs> little did I know, little did I know, you know, I'm still... Once again, five, six years out and still, once again, hadn't hit high school. So the intensity level hasn't got to jump up yet to see what's going on. And um, and growing up with a Johnny Hendricks, those type of guys, you know, um, you know, I mean, if you you guys ever get to train with Johnny, that dude, that dude's a beast. And so, you know, getting to wrestle with that guy and getting to sharpen myself and everything like that as 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 he kept those guys kept me you know, wanting more. And, and so college really didn't become a dream until you know, uh, my sophomore year in college. And, um, you know, when I, after I won Fargo, and I was like, okay, I might have a shot of getting a full scholarship, you know, if this is, you know, if I keep going this route and doing what I need to do and keep sharpening myself and keep learning. Uh, and you, obviously you win Fargo, you, you're undefeated in Oklahoma, Pretty hot prospect, I would think, and you're in a hotbed, right? Stillwater's not far away. Norm's not far away. You're mm -hmm. in the Midwest. There's a lot of other good schools. Who who, who recruited you, and who did you – where did you consider, other than, obviously, Man, Oklahoma? I, yeah, I had Oklahoma State, Nebraska, Arizona State, uh, uh, Air Force, Navy, Army. You know, um, my folks were really pushing for those three, Air Force, Navy, Army. And, you know, little did I know – the stuff that I know now about those schools – they would have been higher on the chart if I would have been more educated in there. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so grow, uh, I always tell people, boys in the hood, watching boys in the hood as a young kid, that's not good. 
<laughs> you know, telling me you know, a brother shouldn't be in the army, you know, matter what. <laughs> so, uh, as I that, that that stuck in my head as a as a young man. I was like, I ain't going in no army. Yeah. I'm never looking in no army. And then around my my senior year was September 11th. That's what happened, you know. Yeah. And and I was like. I most definitely ain't going in no army, baby. Or, you know, you know. Yeah. I'm not about to go send you like I'm not about to go send me to go find some dude I've never heard of. You know, and it's like that 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 was the way my mind was. I, I felt that's the way I was I was educated on it about it. You know, little did I know with the stuff I've seen now with guys that wrestled in the army and the air force and the navy and everything like that. You know, um, you know, the, there's so much good that comes out of that and so uh but those were the main schools and obviously it came down to nebraska oklahoma state and ou what was the tipping point for for ou man with the, the nebraska you know out of my coaches nebraska was my favorite coach man it was my favorite coach um but nebraska was too far you know and and you know i was a big nebraska fan football fan growing up and everything and then uh you know, with Oklahoma State, you know, it was too country. Uh, I was seeing nothing but cowboys. And, and I remember, you know, Johnny Hendricks and I, you know, rival high schools. We always, we, you know, we was always raised to go to OU. And, and but when we went on that visit and uh, we, we saw that, we were like, Johnny, this is the place for you, man. This is it. Then Johnny's like, I know, I know. And he's like, this is the place for me. And he's like, and I'm waiting for you to make it the place for you. And I'm like, and you know, and I, I did some praying, I'm thinking, and I'm like, man, if I got hurt, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I had to ask myself the question. If I got hurt and I couldn't wrestle, where would I be motivated still to go get my degree? And oh, you, it came down to that right there. And, um, and so, you know, you know, obviously, you know, I bust this, I bust my boss's child. So I always say, well, y'all know it's because y'all didn't choose Hayeswinkle. You know, if y'all would have <laughs> chose Hayeswinkle, you know, we, we probably could have had the greatest team of all time, you know, <laughs> at Oklahoma State. And so, uh, and so with Hayeswinkle not going now, I was like, well, let's go here and let's pour my own. And unfortunately, we couldn't beat them guys. Them guys were, man, that was the Golden State, <laughs> you know, of wrestling, teams. you know. Yeah, you could you couldn't beat them guys, and so uh, you know. But the deal is, people ask me, do I regret it? I'm like, no, I don't regret it one bit. And um, you know, the, the stuff I got to learn at OU, and that was a, that was a hard thing telling John Smith no. I remember <laughs> telling my coach, my boss, I was like, y'all call him and tell him no, and then they, they were like, okay, I'll tell him. And then John John was like, well, let me talk to him real quick. And so I got on the phone, and John was like. I'm not giving up on you. You're going to be a cowboy by the time, you know, this school season's over. And I'm like, okay, all right. Even though I already committed to OU, I already <laughs> signed my, my my letter. And he's like, you're going to be a cowboy. I'm just letting you know that. And I'm like, okay, all right. And then, you know, how you going to tell a seven-time world champion that you're not, you know, you're not coming to the school? And that was very hard. I, I, I admit I was nervous. I remember every time I shook his hand, John, John was like, you know you should have been a cowboy. And I'm like, I know. I'm a Dallas cowboy. I mean, can, does that work? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. Not at all. All right. Uh, so so you, right, you, right. you moved to Norman. You're going to OU. Like, you'd been introduced to college wrestling when you were younger, right? And you thought it was this crazy mm -hmm. thing. And But by the time you got there, mm -hmm. did you believe you could – did you believe you could win right out of the gate? Like, or did that, like, not – Belief happened until you start competing and, and test yourself against some of the best guys. Yeah, that took a couple months because when I got in that room, you got to understand, I got in that room, I started getting my butt whooped those first couple weeks. I really did. Um, you know, because once again, like I said, I, I was faster than a lot of people. I was stronger than a lot of people. But then, you know, being a four-time state champion and you're getting in that room and you're wrestling 22, 23-year-old grown men as an 18 year old who've been in that room that know that intensity, you know, um, you know, who are also four time <laughs> state champions as well. They might, they might be from Georgia. They might be from Kansas. They might be from, you know, other places, but I got in there and I got my eyes open real quick. And I remember Jack, you know, he was like, son, how can you be the top recruit of your class? And you don't have the basic fundamentals now. And, you know, at first I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he was like, your stance, your stance is pathetic. You're giving these good guys a, a, a open buffet. 
they're just picking you apart because your hand's out in front. And I'm like, oh, well, with the way my style was, I was counter offense. I wanted guys to shoot so I can go behind. And, and these guys, these guys are seeing it different. They're like, oh, really? You're going to leave your hands back there? Okay, boom. And they're just taking it left and right. Well, you know, it took a couple weeks. It took a couple weeks of getting adjusted, you know, working on my stance and motion, you know, with Hayeswinkle, um, after practice, before practice. And, and I started, my intensity started to rise. And so those guys that, that, that were putting them hands on me at the beginning, now I'm like, well, well Hey, let's go, let's go. They, they didn't want to go. <laughs> they didn't want to wrestle as much. And, and I'm like, well, coach, man, I'm trying to wrestle these guys. They don't want to wrestle. And he's like, well, um, you know, obviously because you're beating them. You know, they, they're, they're trying to get with other guys. And so uh, uh, guys like Teak Moore and, and Lightner at the time, you know, um, took me on their wings and I started wrestling with them, which upped up my levels because – I mean, T. Moore, I mean, I don't know what y'all know about him now, but T. Moore, when he was cutting weight, man, he was like a, he, he, he was a beast. He, he was he was mean. He was ferocious. But at the end of the day, you know, he wanted to see you succeed too as well. And so um, getting to wrestle with those guys day in and day out, it, it opened up my eyes big time. And I remember uh, my second tournament, you know, I didn't place. It was in the Missouri. It was out in Missouri. And I was like, Man, I didn't place. I can't remember this feeling. I was like, but I'm beating all these other guys. I'm beating these guys, and 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 still, it's it's different from competition. And I remember having that sour taste, especially seeing Hayeswinkle. You know, Hayeswinkle is my roommate. You know, we fed off each other. You know, we had a like a, a jealousy thing. Meaning, you know, Sam goes out and texts somebody. I'm gonna get a little jealous because I want to go out and pin somebody. You know, so I can come back. You know, we used to we had fun deals like that. It was like, hey, whoever scores the least amount of points for the team has to do the dishes or has to mow the lawn. Has to, you know, that's that. You know, being my roommate, that's how we that's how we motivated each other within the competition. And um, you know, when when and when I didn't place, and I saw Sam come home with a trophy, and I'm like, man, I gotta one, I gotta see this, and two. You know, I got to do all this cleaning and everything because I didn't do my part. And I'm like, I can't have this feeling no more. And that's what I remember that second week in November. I said, I can't feel like this. And, and you know, and I was still playing on red shirt. This is before, you know, the guy that was ahead of me, Nate Parker, you know, um, you know, was dismissed from the team. And coach said, hey, it's game time. And once again, we train. You train as a red shirt. You train to be ready. And. And he says, hey, you ready? I was like, let's do it. And there was no looking back. Was there any part of you when he said, you know, you're in, was there any hesitation or any, like, second guessing? Or, or was it like you said, like, let's go. I'm ready. No, there was no hesitation because I, I had wrestled Nate Parker off. And if you don't know, um, a quick shout out to Nate Parker as well. If you ain't seen this movie, American Skin, go see it. It's in theaters right now. He's doing well. But uh, Nate was a returning All-American. And um, he had placed fifth the year before. And so he's a senior. So, you know, um, I was just playing on red shirt. Why it was his senior year. And I'll come right in after he graduates. Well, things didn't, didn't work out that way. And so um, Nate was dismissed from the team. And, you know, I had wrestled off Nate in the in the Russell offs and I beat him like nine to nine to four. And so I had that in the back of my mind, like Nate's ranked number three right now at forty one and this is who I wrestle with and I've already had good competition against him and you know and beat him. So that was in, that 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 drove me. And so when it when it was saying, Hey, it's your time, let's go course I, I, I was I was ready you know of course I'm nervous I mean who, who isn't and the deal is is it's like no I've trained for this I'm ready for this let's do this and so uh, my team needs me right now and and so when it happened it was no looking back sure and and I'm going off memory here because I was I was competing at the time but it was you and, and wasn't Zach Esposito from uh, Oklahoma State the same way and you probably hadn't wrestled him till maybe second semester and he was Top two, three guy, I believe. Top five guy for sure. Um, what do you remember about meeting up with him? I assume, and one of the bedlam duels would have been the first time you wrestled him. Yeah. No, actually, Espo beat me in the first tournament. So okay. we had the it was the Central Central Missouri tournament. That was my first tournament. I took second there, and I lost to Espo. I lost to him by one. He hit me with a famous it. inside trip. And so I was like, and then and then 
um you know i started seeing what he was doing i was like man because he was he was already coming out of uh red shirt and so i'm like man he's taking over and i'm not too far behind him and so uh, when i was seeing the things that he was doing i was like i can wrestle with this guy and yeah and i didn't meet our first competition after that was the national duels i saw him um i saw him out at national duels and uh and I, I think I beat him three two or four three, one of those. And so that that in a way that that was that got my name on the map because I, I wrestled a couple of good guys that weekend at national duels. And so uh that that opened up that that started getting people to talk about me. And so I remember my assistants and I remember Rod Jones and Teague were saying, Okay, people know who you are. Now, you know, you, you still got work to do because now I'm top ten. You know, these guys are still a five and everything. And and that's what drove me for the second half of the season. Walking into the NCAA championships, your your true freshman year, did you think, did you like, think, I'm going to win this? Or was it like one of these, we'll just well, see how I, it shakes out? Yeah, it was more see how it shakes out. My deal was, it's like, all right, I'm ranked number one going into nationals. I'm like, one, everybody's going to be coming at me. I got to stay the hunter. And two, this is going to be the easiest, even though it's not easy, this is going to be the easiest time I'm going to have in college. I knew that as a true freshman because in a way, you know, when you, you know, we didn't have like Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have all this stuff where people were talk. We had like, you had the map dot com. <laughs> you might have had like sooner, the sooner stuff. And, and, um, you know, you hear people and you, you, you're reading it and you're like, people are like, no, nah, he's going to crumble at nationals. He's going, he's going to fall apart at nationals. And when you, you hear that, you're like, okay, good. That's what I need is motivation to, for somebody, you know, so I don't get complacent and say, have that story where I, I was ranked number one, but you know, and so, um, you know, that's what drove it. My, I remember my coach saying, taking one match at a time, taking one period at a time, boy, you, you remember. You know, you ain't wrestling all these matches. You're wrestling one, and that's what I—that's what I focused on and everything. Before you wrestled, did you plan on doing a giant backflip if you won? No, you never see me celebrate. People, I—I I never was a celebrate. It, it, it just never was. It was never in me. And the deal was in that semifinals match against um, Mester, I believe, from Central Michigan. It just came out because of the way the match was. You know, it was overtime. I had to get out and. And I, and that's what made it exciting. I, I believe if coming out and dominating, no, you wouldn't see celebration. It's when you, you know, you have those close, intense matches that 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 bring it out of you and everything. Sure, you got some air. I remember just being like, "Is he ever going to come down?" <laughs> like, my goodness. Okay, you you said you said um, I knew my I knew that true freshman year when I was ranked number one, it would be the easiest. Um, and mm -hmm. you, you, you took sixth the next year, first junior, and I think second mm -hmm. as a senior. Was that your mm -hmm. easiest, you know, whatever you want to call it? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, actually it was, you know, because it, I mean, it's hard, you know, being the hunter and then the hunted, you know, um, you know, you, it's hard a lot of times when you're training, you're trying to still be the hunter and the hunt. But obviously when you've been at that top, a lot of times the only way to go is down. You know, or just stay where you're at. And so, um, and, you know, and I, I talk to people about, uh, about the boroughs, you know, I'm like, what he's doing is phenomenal because it's hard to just keep going up, you know, when you're at the peak of everything, you know, and the only way to go is stay where you're at or go down. And, you know, doing what he's doing, it, it, it's a phenomenal thing. And so, you know, my practices didn't change. My, my, my motivation, you know, jumped up even higher you know and so you know it's like all right now people know who i am i got people are coming for me i got to go now you know with with a couple bumps and um, bruises you know now it's like i got to learn how to you know wrestle from that because i've never had injuries and i never I, i'm grateful I, I didn't know what injuries was until my sophomore year and i'm like well why do i gotta have this type of injury why i gotta be a broken neck you know, and then turn around a broken ankle, you know, it's like, I've never been injured, and now I'm t injured twice, and so, um, and one thing my coaches were saying, don't let that define you, go beat them with a broken neck and a broken ankle, and, you know, and so that was my motivation and drive going into there, but unfortunately, it didn't come that way, and so, you know, and, and when you, you saw that my sophomore year, 
you know, once again, you hear from the Matt and you hear from like the sooner, the sooner deal. I remember the, 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 the folder was called, where was he? And I was like, and it was my name, you know, like, uh, oh, or, and they, and they, and another one had, yeah, or they even said, where did he go? And I was like, oh, really? And then, so I open up and I see all this stuff of people writing and I'm like, <laughs> and you know, Hayes would go at the time, Hayes would go, so was going to quit reading that junk. These people yeah. don't know who you are. I was like, no. I was like, no. Uh, okay, where was it? And that was my drive. That was my motivation, you know, going into my junior year and say, okay, yeah, where am I? Where am I? You know, and even though not too many people knew that, that was that was my drive as well, and and that stuck with me my my senior year as well. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you had a great career, you know, and if you can change a thing or two, what would be the thing? And I'm like, my main thing I would change is you would have to tech me or major me to beat me, you know, because knowing that's not going to happen. The deal is, it's not sitting in front of somebody, you know, waving my gun while this guy's waving his gun and I'm saying, shoot, or I'm going to shoot. You know? Yeah. Um, eventually, that dude's going to shoot and, and do what he did. And so, and that, that, I always try to break that to my athletes. It's like, don't sit out there waving your sword. You know, eventually somebody's going to swing the sword. Yeah. Get out there and start swinging it. Start, start wrestling. Worst thing can happen is you lose. You get beat. You're trying to, you, you know, go. But the deal is, is you, you, you know, you're putting the effort into trying to win instead of trying to, trying not to lose. Sure. And we're kind of getting to the end line, but I want to get into this neck injury. Like, when did you injure your neck? Um, how did it happen? And, and what were the after effects? Um, I broke my neck in the, in the fall of 03 and I was lifting weights. I was doing military press and I was trying to get myself stronger, bigger. You know, one of my guys on, on my team, I was lifting with him. He's, he was a pound for pound strongest guy. And I was like, I got to get stronger. I got to make sure I stay stronger this and that and the other. Well, my body didn't react to it. <laughs> and so, uh, and if you know me, I can sleep through a lot of things. I can sleep through, man, I, I get on a plane, I'll pass out, I get in the car, I pass out. I can sleep through a lot of things. Well, I wasn't sleeping and, and that's a big deal. And I remember, you know, going in and getting an x-ray and the doc's like, yeah, man, you ruptured your disc in your neck. And he's showing me and he's showing in how it was split. And I was like, one, I was like, I should have paid attention more and, you know, human anatomy. I was like, we got, we got disc in our necks, you know, I didn't, I didn't know this. And so I'm like, uh, okay. You know, cause in my mind was, I'm thinking a disc cause Sam was a big disc golfer and I'm yeah. like, I don't know what these type of discs are. And I'm taking it in and I'm like, okay, so what's the seriousness of it? And he's like, well, you know, you keep wrestling now, you know, without doing anything, you can hit that thing and it could paralyze you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I, he was like, or, you know, he's like, you got two options. You can have surgery now and you'll be out for the season. Or you can, you know, sit out for three to four months, see what it do to itself, see how you feel and go. And, you know, obviously, I, you know, my coach was like, well, why don't you just sit out, you know, and see how it feels. And this was in August, September of 03. And so I sat out. And then, you know, obviously during those times, once you go, it's time to go. It's January, you know, that I came back. And so I came back, um, actually re-aggravated again. And, you know, and parts of my body, my right side would go numb, you know, when, when I'm shooting. And so, um, but it's too late. I can't, I can't stop the season now because, you know, I'm, it's going. It, it ain't no, there was no, the, the, the red shirts they get and the medical red shirts they get now, it, it, it ain't like how it was then. So, and I remember my coach saying, well, it's going. Let's, let's let's keep it going. Let's nurse it. Let, we'll be smart with our training, and let's go. And I remember, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And um, I remember uh, for the uh, All-Star match, I was wrestling Moore, Scott Moore. And, um, and I wrestled him. And I remember over time, he caught me in a cradle. And I was like, I'm not going to no cradle. You're not getting me in no cradle. And he took me back, and my foot got caught in the mat. And you hear a pop, boom. And I'm like, oh, man, and as I'm slowly going back, you know, I squeal. And I'm like, I'm going back, but I'm, I'm not concerned about the ankle. I'm concerned that I'm on my back. And so, uh, um, you know, he got his count and, you know, I get up and I'm hopping 
and and I'm like, man, and he, you know, he got me in overtime, and I remember the next day waking up, and my ankle looked like the clumps, you know, like Nutty <laughs> Professor, like, <laughs> I mean, I was, I, it was swelled up, I couldn't walk, and I got to catch a plane, and I'm hobbing and everything like that, and I'm like, man, how do I have a, a broken neck and a broken ankle, man, and, and this is, this is in January, and I'm like, man, and I got a month and a half left of wrestling, well, I sit out for another you know, four weeks, you know, with it taped up and, you know, doing swim workouts and everything like that. And I'm like, well, I have no choice. I can't, I can't not wrestle. And, um, I remember going into, to, to nationals. I was like, I got to go in and I got to win this with a broken neck and broken ankle. And that, and like I said, that was my drive. And I remember losing in the semis and that was the worst mistake. You know, when I lost in the semis, you know, that was, that was, probably the, the the toughest time of my career because I, I took the bait of saying well second through eighth is the same they're the same and I remember Hazel was like no don't say that come back and get third and I'm like no they're all Americans I trained to be a national champion and little did I know I went downhill from there and I remember taking six I'm looking up at everybody and I'm close to the bottom and I'm like Oh, I'll never feel this way again. I was like, it, it was heartbreaking. And, you know, and, and for me, it was heartbreaking, you know. Right. And so my guys, they hear, they're like, heartbreaking? I'd love to take six, you know. Right. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, but that wasn't my mentality. That wasn't the reason why I trained. And so uh, I remember that feeling. And I was like, yeah, I will not give in or give up on myself again and, and take that bait of seeing second through eighth is the same. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, or is- yeah, advice from Sam, who did come back and take third uh, multiple times. So, mm-hmm. um, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and we're we're actually to, we're actually a couple minutes over the end, but um, Tia, I got one more, and I maybe you're on. I think you're on when we played this with with uh, Christy Davis. It's the wins and whoopings. You know, throughout your career, is there one memorable win and one memorable butt whooping that you took um, for any reason? Man, win. Sometimes I'm just trying to think. Uh, I mean, one win I, I was happy, I, I was content with was, uh, you know, Jesse Jensen. And he 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 was a, you know, he's a dude I looked up to. You know, he was actually the the dude I saw. Uh, I never knew of the Ace of All American poster, but he was the first one of the 2000. And so, um, you know, I followed him when he was at Harvard and everything. And then I was happy beating him, <laughs> you know, at the at the New York Open, and and so. I was excited about that, but uh, man, one weapon I knew I took, and this was in Cuba. This was when we all went down to Cuba for a tournament, and I wrestled a dude named Garzon. And um, you know, like like Christy said, she was in between weights. I, I couldn't I couldn't make thirty two, and I, I felt small for forty forty five. And so um, and so when I did that. I weighed in, and, you know, I didn't cut no weight. You know, guys were busting my chops, you know, 45. And I remember wrestling this dude, and I was like, this dude is big as Burroughs. <laughs> like, this dude is huge. I was like, this dude cannot, you know, like, this dude can't make this weight and then be back up there the next day. I was like, huh. I was like, now I'm looking at Zeke and these guys. I was like, this dude is huge. And the guys, he was like, I know, just let's just tire him out and this and that. And I couldn't move this dude. Like for most most part in my career, I can hold my ground. And this dude, he dominated me four to one, and then he dominated me five to two. And I couldn't, I just couldn't move this dude. And I was like, I got the man. I was like, this dude whooped my tail. I was like, I don't believe this dude is a forty five pounder. And so <laughs> I remember we went back. We were back in that wrestling room, and I, you know, I checked my weight, and I weighed fifty two, and I was like. All right, I gotta get bigger, man. I'm small, and, and little did I know this dude got on, and he was winning. And he, like I said, he didn't think I was paying attention. And so, you know, I was turning around and I'm looking back at the scale, and I'm like, "This way, this dude weighs 69." And I'm like, <laughs> "How do you?" I'm like, "Hold on, man. You don't gain no 25 pounds, 24 pounds in less than you know a day." And then so I'm like sitting to myself, I was like, "This dude did not make weight, you know, because." The Cuban wrestlers didn't all make weight or didn't weigh in like how we weighed in. And so I was like, this dude didn't make weight. And then so I'm like, but this was a big dude. He he moved me around. He controlled me, man. And I'm like, and you know, and I never thought, I never lost it. That I always tell people, man, that dude with my tail. That's, in all my matches I've wrestled, I ne- never really come off the mat and say, that dude was better than me. You know, I, a lot of times when I lose, I'm like, I didn't pull the trigger. That's what happens. That's what I get. I didn't pull the trigger. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Um. He, he, I walked out with him and I'm like, 
this dude was better than me, man. He was bigger than me, but he was better than me. And so that, that stuck with me. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, Tion, I appreciate you sharing your story with us, uh, catching up today, and, and we're looking forward to continuing to watch the Cowboys, Wyoming Cowboys compete. Um, you competing this weekend? Yes, we have West Virginia and Arizona State uh, this Saturday, um, 10 and, and noon, so it'll be Mountain West time, so 11 o'clock your time and then 1 o'clock. All right. Well, Thanks awesome, man. Yeah. Appreciate you having a uh, uh, chat with us this afternoon and look forward to catching you guys the rest of the season. I appreciate you, baby. All right. Yep. Have a great day, man. Thanks, Tion. All right. Yep. All right. Full show with Chrissy Davis and Tion Ware. Covered a lot of ground with both of them. Um, and, of course, Captain's Cup coming up just the weekend after this. So, um, any parting words from you, David? No. I Hey, I'm excited. I get to call these Wyoming matches this weekend. So Nice. It's going to be fun. Back to your roots, David. Back to my roots. Those who didn't know you used to live in Wyoming for the last 10? Eight years. Eight years? Yep. Close. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. For David Bray, I'm Mark Bader. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.